Okay, let's work some problems with relativistic energy. First of all, how much energy is required to accelerate a proton from rest to a velocity of half the speed of light? And I'm giving you the mass of the proton both in kilograms and in MeV over C squared. All right, which one should you use? Well, what do you want your answer in? Do you want your answer in joules or in electron volts? You can work either way. All right, but the basic idea is this. I want to accelerate this proton. I know it's mass, and I want to accelerate it to half the speed of light. How much energy do I have to give it? Well, how much energy does it have when it's moving half the speed of light? Remember, the total energy of a particle is gamma u mc squared. Remember that u reminds me that this gamma has to do with the velocity of the particle, not the velocity of some reference frame I'm transforming into. But that's the total energy. Remember, the total energy is made up of the rest energy plus the kinetic energy. I don't have to give it the rest energy because it's already got the rest energy when it's at rest, right? I just need to give it this extra energy to accelerate it. So this is what I'm trying to find, all right? So the kinetic energy that I'm trying to find then is just going to be gamma u mc squared minus the rest energy, but the rest energy is just mc squared, right? So the kinetic energy is just gamma u minus one times mc squared. That's what I'm looking for. All right, and it's as simple as plugging things in, right? Because gamma sub u, that's just one over the square root of one minus u squared over c squared, all right? And u is the final velocity, half the speed of light, minus one times the mass, it's gonna be the mass of my proton, times c squared, all right? So from this point, hopefully you can plug numbers in, all right? So u over c is just gonna be half, so this is just, I'll go this far, one minus, 0.5 squared minus 1 and then we just plug in the mass of the proton times c squared we can either plug in the mass in kilograms here and then we'll put in c of course c is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second right I can plug that in for c plug this in for the mass and get my answer and if I look at this if this is in kilograms and this is in meters per second, I square that, I get units of joules. Kilograms, meters per second squared is joules, right? Or alternatively, I could plug in my mass like this and then the C squared just cancels with the C squared and I get my answer in mega electron volts. But there's the basic problem, all right? So all you gotta do now is plug in the numbers. Next problem, what is the momentum of a proton with a kinetic energy of 100 MeV? Once again, I'm giving you the mass of the proton. So I know what its kinetic energy is. I want to know what its momentum is. All right, so what is the momentum of a particle? The momentum is just gamma u m u, right? So if I can find the velocity of my particle when it's got a given kinetic energy, I can put that velocity here. I can plug it into my gamma sub u, all right? So how do I find the velocity of the particle? Well, I know its kinetic energy. I've given its kinetic energy. That's 100 MeV, right? And the kinetic energy is gamma u minus one mc squared. We just saw that, right? So all I have to do now is solve this for velocity and then I can plug the velocity into here. All right, so what's the velocity gonna be equal to? How do I solve this? Well, first let's write, let's get the mc squared over to the other side. ek over mc squared is equal to gamma sub u minus one. Oh, and let's add one to both sides. So gamma sub u is going to be ek mc squared plus one. So that's the kinetic energy which is given, that's the mass of my proton which is given. All right, but gamma sub u is one over the square root of one minus u squared over c squared. All right, so I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square and invert both sides. All right, so I'm gonna square both sides and then take one over both sides and this thing then becomes one minus u squared c squared and that's gonna equal one over, right, we squared this and took one over it so it's e k ek over mc squared, that's just a scribble because I started writing something I didn't intend to, plus one and that's all squared, all right? So these are all givens, I can calculate this. Now we just need to solve this for u. So first I'll add one to both, or subtract one from both sides, then multiply both sides by negative one. So this is boom, negative, positive, all right? Then I'll take the c squared over to the other side and lastly, I'm going to take the square root. So u is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus 1 over the kinetic energy over mc squared plus 1 squared. How's that? All right? So there's my velocity. Does it have the correct 
units. Well, C has units of velocity. One has no units. This better not have any units then, right? Because I'm subtracting it from one. This is an energy. This is an energy. Okay, it looks like the units work out. Does it make sense? A bigger... All right, if I have no kinetic energy, then this is just one over one. S subtract that from one, I get zero, and I get no velocity. Good. As this kinetic energy increases, this denominator gets bigger, which means this gets smaller, and in the limit of infinite energy, all right, this is going to become one, and we're going the speed of light. Okay, so that totally makes sense. So I can use this equation to find u. Normally I tell you don't plug in numbers until the end because things will cancel out, but this is kind of big and cumbersome, and when I plug it into the square root up here, it's gonna get probably pretty ugly. So my recommendation would be actually plug numbers in here and find what the velocity of your proton is. But keep lots of digits on your calculator, all right? Then, once you've got that, we can plug it into here to find the momentum, right? And the momentum is just this. It's momentum is equal to gamma sub u, but that's just one over the square root of one minus u squared over c squared times the mass of the proton times u. So the, that's given. We just found our u down here and I'm gonna leave it up to you so I can be done here to plug those values in and get what the moment momentum would be. All right, moving on. A nuclear power plant generates 10 gigawatts for one day. How much does the mass of the fuel rods decrease? All right, so the point is I've got this nuclear fuel that's generating power, all right? As these reactions occur, energy is released. But energy, losing energy, taking energy out of the fuel means making the fuel lighter, right? Because the rest energy, E naught, is mc squared. So all we have to do is if we know how much energy came out of the plant, all right? Now this is kind of a loaded question because, you know, is that 10 gigawatts of electricity out the door because maybe there are losses and whatnot? But since I didn't give you any more details, you're going to have to assume that I mean 10 gigawatts comes out of the fuel rods, however we use it efficiently or not, all right? So if the energy that comes out of our fuel rods is 10 gigawatts, all right, that tells us how much the rest energy changed. So if the rest energy is mc squared, if I change the rest energy by taking some fuel out, so this is my output, this is my 10 gigawatts, that's the change in the rest energy, that's just the change in mass times c squared. So all I have to do is say, ah, the change in mass is the change in rest energy divided by c squared, and so this is just going to be 10 gigawatts, that's 10 to the 10th watts, or, joule, or joules per second, or better yet, kilograms meters squared per second squared. That's a joule, but then I'm going to do it... Oh, no, I just want energy. We're not done. Pardon me. That's energy. I'm giving you power. The energy that comes out is going to be power times time. So here we go. We're going to do better here. So the change in mass is going to be the energy that comes out, which is power times time divided by c squared, but power then, here we go, is 10 to the 10th watts, which is kilograms, meters per second squared is joules per second, so that's going to be seconds cubed, times my time, what is my time? It's one day, that's going to be, um, one day is 60 minutes, and if I multiply by 60 again, I'm, then I get seconds, so there's seconds, and then I'm going to divide by c squared, which is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8th, meters per second, and that's all squared. All right, so my meters squared cancels there, and here I have seconds and seconds cubed, so um, if I cancel this with one of these, this becomes seconds squared, and I can cancel these seconds with that second squared there, and my units are just kilograms, all right? Seeing if things make sense, if I have more power or more time, that's more energy, should have the mass change, all right, everything seems to be reasonable. The only thing I have left to do is plug in the numbers and see if the numbers make sense. So let's plug in the numbers. So 10 to the 10th times 60 times 60 divided by 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 squared. That gives me, oh, that uh, 0 0.401 milligrams. Uh, 0.401 grams, right? So it's... 0.401 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, or 0.401 grams. All right, 
Does that make sense? That is a macroscopic amount of weight. This is relativity stuff. So um, I don't know, maybe I scratch my head and wonder, wow, does it really lose that much mass? But then again, we're generating 10 gigawatts for a day, all right? And so maybe that's reasonable. If not, I can check my numbers, make sure I did it right. 10 to the 10th times 60 times 60. Yeah, looks like I plugged my numbers in right. It must be real. All right, and there are your example problems for today's homework.